it's it, it's really hard to get your head around it, these kinds of numbers. It really is. So it's the 310th day of yeah. 2017, yeah. and you say that there's 307, 307 mass, mass, mass shootings. mass shootings every day. Is there... Is there a day that goes by that you don't deal with this issue? No, no, I can't remember the last time. It's been years since we had a day where we didn't have an overdose. Are we desensitized to it, you think, at this point? I hope not. The audience seems to say yeah. yes. I you mean, I, I don't think you're necessarily wrong, ma'am. Um, I, I, I don't know the answer to this problem. I don't think anybody really no. does. Sheriff Hardell says the husband shot his wife multiple times before turning the gun to himself. He says this is the first time hearing a case like this in his career. Not in uh, 30 plus years of law enforcement, I haven't had um, a case like this. This is uh, a little bit different. It is absolutely unusual for our, our community to experience something of this magnitude. Nerve wracking when it's going to be like this, you know, for a long time, a lot of this crime and hate. One other statistic I'm throwing in there, 443% increase in overdoses in the last two years. And as you pointed out, one county out of uh, more than 3,000 in this country. In a deadly shooting spree in California, a shooter going on the rampage, killing So it's almost become, you know, oh, it's the usual thing, no big deal anymore. I Not think that's dangerous. Shooting. Oncologists are dialed in. Detectives are dialed in. Undercover police officers, they're dialed in that the world is dark for most of us. We're not dialed in like that. We have two things that work for us in regards to the brokenness of the world. Every once in a while, there'll be an event that makes the fog lift. Every once in a while, somebody go in and shoot up a school or shoot up a theater and we'll go, oh my gosh, it's awful out there. Every once in a while, somebody we love will get sick, we will get sick and the fog lifts and we're like, it's busted. It's busted. But primarily how we operate in regards to the world being broken is that we have this kind of low-grade gnawing in us, this desire for more while not quite being sure what that more is. So there's something deep in all of us that's kind of, there's got to be more than this. Angel one responding. I'm not really sure what a plateau is going to look like. You know, I see this as a countrywide problem that has the potential to bankrupt the country. How often do they get on the truck to fight a fire now? Less than 9% of the time right now. So most of the time that they get on a truck? Yes. It's to deal with an overdose? Yes. And 10% of that time, it's a death. Throw the statistics that you just said uh, in that clip from the movie here a minute. Ten percent of the population of Cabo County is addicted. A hundred million dollars in medical costs over the last year and a half. There are people that are really attuned to men. It's a mess out there. And then if you want to get out of just um, men and women being depraved and get into just the brokenness of the natural order. Uh, my wife, she's about, I don't know, like, I don't know, something's going on with her. Like she's, like she's freaking out, like somebody's out to get her. That was the call Jacob Henderson made about his wife, Sarah, before investigators say she pulled the trigger on her own children. You know, how does a mother do that? It's 
unthinkable. My wife, my, my wife just shot her kid. Okay, is this Jacob? Yeah, it is. Okay, what is your oh, wife's name? She, she's trying to commit to this right now. She's trying to choke herself. What did I do, Lord? What did I do? Apparently telling investigators that someone was after her. We started here at the Lapeer County Jail just before midnight on Wednesday. Lapeer County Sheriff Scott McKenna says a man walked into the jail. Deputies listened to him through a lobby camera microphone. They heard him talking about that he was God and that he was here at the county jail to break out one of his, quote, son's followers. The man left. Deputies and police go after him. He pulls over a couple times, he yells that he is God and his follower should be released from jail and threatened suicide before taking suspects bizarre actions leading up to the fatal crash early yesterday. The Pier County Sheriff Scott McKenna says the man was overheard claiming to be God. Oh my God. This explosion erupting after a fire at UNC's Tree of Knowledge. A witness tells us the man fell to the ground with burns. He was taken to the hospital. Meanwhile, authorities surrounded the suspect. Eyewitnesses say he yelled, hail Satan after the fire and explosion. A witness reported hearing the suspect yell, this is the revelation. You've witnessed the antichrist as police detained him. That witness also telling him that the suspect repeatedly said, hail Satan. Now, as of this hour, we still don't know who this suspect is. And if Welcome back. In the age of social media, it's common to hear about challenges online that many people are involved in to prove something. And now there's a new one. Social media threatening like it's never threatened before a suicide game online and parents may have no idea. It's called the Blue Whale Challenge are truly dying to play. That's right, and nobody knows it better than a Bakersfield family. His parents want you to know about something called the Blue Whale Game. It started in Europe, and it's been reported that many teens there have killed themselves after playing it, and now it's reached the west coast of the U.S. A lot of people are wondering what this challenge is. The challenge is established through social media. A curator directs the teen to carry out 50 tasks over 50 days. They get worse as the challenge continues. Go after kids who are depressed, openly depressed on their social media accounts. Other kids have cut a whale into their arm. This mother was in time to prevent the end game suicide. The hardest thing as a parent is to hear your child tell you that they're better off. They felt better off being dead. Now, this is what you feel when you feel like something's not right. The father of the family shooting his wife and two children before turning the gun on himself. And maybe that's working itself out as depression or anxiety or fear or, or um, enslavement to something. But what you're feeling in that moment is there's something at the soul level, according to Ecclesiastes 3.11, where our souls somehow remember Genesis 1 and 2. And they, according to Romans 8, they groan in eager longing along with creation for things to be restored. We can feel that this isn't right. One person telling us never in a million years would they have guessed Chris Gaddis would do something like this. It's just it's unbelievable. So quiet here. Community who say that's not the Chris they knew. Never seen that in him, you know. We have two uh, females down in the kitchen. Christopher Gaddis shot and killed his wife Jeanette, her 30-year-old daughter Candy Kuntz, and Candy's boyfriend. Four male subject on the ground. He's got two gunshots to the stomach. You see things like this on the news. You don't see it right in your front yard. 
and deputies say they are still in the early stages of this investigation, but they are still trying to figure out the why piece here. It's a hard thing to talk about. You're talking about babies Maybe, and children yes. at schools. Yep. I mean, there's debatably, le like I can think of few things that are more dark than that. Proof that love endures all things. The company they keep knows pain. It destroys families completely. These lives are just getting started, but daily they reflect on lives lost. She and her aunt Laura Broyles figured these bears embodied all of it. It's really cool actually. It's love bears all um, from the saying, <laughs> uh, from the Bible verse. Proof that love endures all things. In 34 years, I, I, I have never known of a teacher here in Wicomico County being arrested for the distribution of drugs. To know that our teacher was allegedly involved in illegal distribution anywhere near our schools is um, baffling. I was a 15-year drug addict. Uh, basically, you know, I, I was a functioning addict at first, and then as time progressed, it got worse and worse, and eventually it went to the point where, you know, multiple times I was homeless, in and out of trap motels, robbing and stealing from anyone in my path, and uh, every time it just got worse and worse. I tried a thousand different ways and times to get sober, and nothing ever worked for me. You know, when people always ask that see me go in and out of AA or, you know, different faith-based programs and stuff, they always ask, you know, what was different this time? What, what changed? And I always tell people, you know, when the misery that I was living in 24-7, 365, when the one thing that I would go to to take that away, which at that point was in the form of a needle, when I would do that and I would still be just as miserable as I was before I did it, as a sad day and uh, I always tell people that you know when I got the gift of desperation and I finally had the willingness to seek out God seek out help and take suggestions from people that was the day my whole life changed and it's the day their whole life had changed too um, I'm, I'm not in a religion you know I don't really claim a, a denomination I'm just about Jesus and uh, you know through the reason why I love doing this is because if you look at AA and the 12 steps and you read the Bible and you see what Jesus was all about, you know, they both have the same thing in common. They're both about changing the old person. Isn't it interesting how new stuff makes us feel like better human beings? I mean, we're not, we just got a new watch. That new watch makes us feel better. Have you thought about how crazy that is? That new stuff has a drug-like effect on us? Like you get a new ride and you think you're a better human being? No, you're just the same human being with debt. You're not any better. You just have new stuff. New home makes you feel better about yourself. It's still you. It's just a new house. But it has that effect on us. It's dangerous. You can numb that angst with trinkets and toys. Oh, that I might ever love you enough to lay before you everything you own is going to go to the garage sale or the dump. Eventually, it's going to be buried under a mountain of dirt with a bunch of other rubble. Everything, everything you own is transient, here for but a season. None of it makes you a better person. We both have the same thing in common. We're both about changing the old person and spending that one-on-one -on -one time with God, that, that, that relationship every single day, about helping other, other people.
to do to do the same thing and having a you know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me mentality about life and believe that all things are possible.